I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on pre-calculus. Now we'll try to understand inequalities. I've taken up six examples, so this video is going to be long. But we'll understand most of the concepts which you need to know to solve any inequality. Six questions here are y greater than 2x minus 6, absolute value of x minus 3 less than 2, double inequality where 28 is less than or equal to 2 times 4x plus 9 minus 5 times x plus 7 less than or equal to 64. Then we have a polynomial inequality x square minus 1 times x plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. Now this is kind of quadratic function with you can say a rational twist 8 minus x plus 9 over x greater than or equal to 0 and here we have a proper rational function uh, well this is also a rational function 5 over x minus 1 less than or equal to 2 over x minus 2. Now in inequalities you also learn about uh, number line and at times you have to represent solution on number lines right so you could say you also want to write different ways of relating solutions one number line so based on that uh, I'll add two more questions to this so let me say G the question will be uh, uh, actually it should be a separate question it it is that I'll give you the solution let us say here is your solution right so we'll give you a number line solution we're saying that uh, this point here is is part of solution this this interval is part of solution the idea is in it inequalities you don't get just one or two solutions you get infinite solutions so here is a very tricky question let's say this is minus 5 and this point is 3 the question for you is uh, let me write this as your test question write and inequality with absolute function whose solution is uh, you can say it is minus it is between minus 5 and 3 is it okay shown on the number line so as I've shown you, you could write solution of inequalities in terms of uh, intervals or also on a number line, right? So i like you to solve this question after you understand all the concepts. So that becomes your test question. Okay. Now, let's begin solution of these inequalities. Let me take up the first one which is a straight line y greater than so we'll solve a which is y is greater than 2x minus 6 now when i say y is greater than 2x minus 6 this is kind of different from all others you do not have the term y in any other equation how are you going to solve this it's kind of tricky so what we will have here is a graphical solution. Let me show you. There are two variables, right? So 2D helps us to find solutions for this. So we'll have a graph equal solution or we'll represent the solution on a graph. So let us sketch the line 2x minus 6. Minus 6 being the y-intercept x intercept will be uh, 6 divided by 2 which is 3 positive 2 is the slope right so I could actually sketch a line like this now for me this is the line y equal to 
2x minus 6. Doesn't make sense. Now, what do we need? This point is, is 3 for us, and this is minus 6, right? Perfect. We need everything for y, which is greater than this line. So that means everything kind of like this. Do you see that? On this side. So that becomes the solution. And we are not including the line. So I'm drawing this dashed line here. Does it make sense to you? So line is not included, but that is the solution. So this is a unique example just to show you variety of questions which we could have in inequalities, right? And the idea is to get you prepared for calculus and also first year university mathematics. Now with that, we'll continue with the other questions. However, our approach now will be purely algebraic. So let's do the absolute function. We have this, we need to find solution for the inequality, absolute value of x minus 3 less than 2. Now, as you know, the absolute value less than means what? Let us try to understand this. Take a minute. x minus 3 means that I moved it 3 units to the right. And when I say less than 2, so that means if this is my line at, at 2, then we are looking for something which is within this interval. That is the solution. So I hope you can appreciate it, right? So this is 3, and of course, when I write 0, I'll get 3 here also, right? And this is my line, y equals to 2. How do we do it algebraically? Now we could write this as x minus 3 is actually less than 2, but it could be greater than minus, I mean, greater than minus 2, right? So it is actually between plus and minus 2. That is how you define your absolute function, correct? So it becomes a double inequality. To solve this, let's add 3. So we get minus 2 plus 3 x minus 3 plus 3, 2 plus 3. And we get our solution that x is between these two values, 1 and 5. So these two points are indeed 1 and 5. Do you see that? So that is how we get solution of uh, absolute function inequality. You're getting the idea. Let me give you additional question here. And that is, if I twist this question and I write this as, let us say, x plus 3, instead of less than, if I make it greater than 2, let this be a question for you. What is the solution, right? So if you go with this, basically greater than 2 means what? Outside, outside, right? So, so we need to, in such cases, have two forms. One is when it is positive, then it is greater than 2. But when we have negative of this, that means negative of x plus 3 should be less than, when I do negative, less than minus 2. You get an idea, right? So, so it's either way. Do you understand? So you could redefine your absolute function, which basically is, let's do this. Uh, x plus 3 absolute value is basically equal to x plus 3 negative if x is less than, in this case, what makes 0 is minus 3. Do you understand? But if x is greater than 3, in that case, the equation is just x plus 3. So I hope that concept is clear. So in two different domains, you have to solve this. It's kind of a different question than very different uh, than this. So in this particular case, you have to solve for when x is less than minus 3 or 
when x is greater than minus 3, right? So in that case, the equation changes, correct? So, so I change the sign, but you could do like this also. That is to say, uh, minus of x plus 3, maintain the, you replace absolute value by this, maintain the equation kind of thing. You could do that also, right? So do this for to get your answer. When I do minus, I mean the sign reverses. That is better. So within this domain, try to find the answer, correct? Uh, as you can see, the question now is kind of like this. And what do you expect as your solution? You expect the solution on this side. So that is your solution. So I hope that helps, right? Okay, let's move on and take up the next question. Now, it is uh, inequality with some polynomials. Again, a double inequality. So these questions are relatively straightforward. You just need to expand and simplify. So just open the bracket. So you get 8x plus 18. Open this, we get minus 5x minus 35 less than or equals to 64. Now we have to just simplify the center portion. 8x minus 5x is 3x. And uh, 35 minus 18. So you can use the calculator. So we do 18 minus 35 equals to minus 17 less than or equal to 64. Now we should add 17 to get rid of the number from the center. So we get 28 plus 17 less than or equal to 3x. We added 17. 64 plus 17. Correct. So we added 17 on all the three terms. We get this. Now you can add them, right? So what do you get here? You get 0, 40 less than or equal to 3x less than or equal to 1 and to 81 correct now sorry i didn't add 17 to 28 so this was not 12 it was 17 sorry so this is wrong so it is 45 we had to add 17 right so basically at that this stage add 17 to all the three terms let me write like this make it clear so then you get this okay now let's divide by three to get our answer so when you divide by three you get x in the center 45 divided by three and 81 divided by three so that gives you the answer correct so the solution as you can clearly see is 3 times 1, 15, 8 oh, by 3. So 3 times 2, 27, correct? So what we get here is our answer, which is x is between 15 and 27, correct? So that is how you solve it. So I hope that makes sense. Now let's move on and do the next question, which is based on polynomials. Now here I could do this with graph and also with a table. Uh, we call it with intervals. So there are two different approaches which we have been taking to solve such questions. To begin with let me factor this completely we have x squared minus 1, which could be written as x plus 1 times x minus 1. And we already have x plus 3. And we want that to be greater than or equal to 0. So first look into the zeros of this question. Right? So let's look into the zeros. Zeros are at minus 1, plus 1, and minus 3. So let me write them as minus 3 minus 1 and plus 1. So there are three zeros. At 0 the sign changes, remember. So important thing here it is that the sign changes so 
so we may write sign may change in this case all are linear so it will change sign changes for all linear zeros strictly the sign may change if it is not a linear zero if it is a i mean to say a even degree even multiplicity zero sign will not change in this case sign changes for even zero or odd multiplicity okay so that is kind of very important so we know the sign can change and we're looking into inequality so we have to analyze both sides on an interval based on these zeros so we make a table here now in this table, we'll check the value of the inequality, let's say the left side, whether it is positive or negative. That's the whole idea. So these are the three zeros. Let's say the zero is at minus three, minus one and at one. So these are the zeros. Now three zeros divide the plane in four intervals. So this is from minus infinity to minus 3. This is from minus 3 to minus 1. Then we have from minus 1 to 1. And this is from 1 to infinity. Now in each interval, let's take test points. Test point on the left side of minus 3 could be minus 4. Here it could be minus 2. We could take 0 here and 2 there. Now let's check all the uh, factors. The factors, let me arrange them in order. x plus 3, then we have x plus 1 and x minus 1. So if I substitute minus 4, I get negative. With negative 2, I get positive. These values will also return positive value for the given factor. For x plus 1, we are going to get negative. For these, with 0, it will be positive. And for x minus 1, We'll have three negatives, and this is going to be positive. Now, all are three multiplied. All these three are multiplied. So, when you multiply three negatives, you get a negative. Two negatives will give you a positive, negative, and a positive. So, that is what this function is. Let me call f of x. We want that function to be greater than or equal to zero. It means what? It means it should be positive, right? So, those are the solutions. And based on this, we can say that x is within the interval. Since it is greater than or equal to, we can include the zeros, right? So it is x is equal to, I should say within the interval, minus 3, 2, minus 1, both included, union, from 1 to infinity, including 1, but infinity is never included. So that gives you the answer. Does it make sense? Okay. Now this is your algebraic approach. Now let me show you the graph. Since it is a polynomial, degree 3, leading coefficient is positive, that means right up, correct? So, so going through these zeros, linear zeros, the graph has to be kind of like this. So from the graph, it is absolutely clear that it's positive in these two intervals. So solving with graph is very simple. Just sketch it. So for multiple choice questions in your test, that's the best approach. Any inequality given in polynomial form. I hope that makes sense, right? Now let's take up the next example, which is kind of rational function. Now we could take x as common denominator and rewrite the whole equation inequality as 8x minus x squared plus 9 greater than equal to 0. I'm sorry, this is x. <coughs> x is the common, right? So, let's rewrite this. What we have here is minus x squared 
plus 8x plus 9 over x is greater than or equal to 0. I prefer to keep this positive. So I'm just adding one more step here, multiplying both sides by negative, then the sign changes. So what we get here is x squared minus 8x minus 9 less than or equal to 0, right? Okay. Since I did the numerator minus, I'll keep this just x, right? Now, let's solve this. So, we'll factor and solve. Numerator is x squared minus 8x minus 9. So, 9 times 1, 9 negative. So, we could write this as x minus 9 times x plus 1 over x is less than or equal to 0. Now again, it is kind of similar to what we did earlier. So we'll again analyze the, the zeros. So zeros for us are what? We have three zeros here. Okay. So we have zeros. The two zeros are at 9 and minus 1. And then we have a point of discontinuity. We can say for this function, undefined at x equals to 0, right? So these are the critical numbers. So let's say this is minus 1 for us. That is 0 and this is 9. So we need to have test points in these intervals. So let's take our test point as minus 2. Here we could have minus half, 0. 0.5 that is. We could take 4 and 10. Now these are the three factors. So let me write these factors, x plus one, then we have x and x minus nine. If I substitute minus two, I get negative. For other values, it is positive. For x, these two are negative, these are positive. For this, all these are negative and that interval is positive. Now when you do multiplication with three negatives, you get a negative, Two negatives gives you positive, negative, and positive. So in our case, we are looking for solution which is less than or equal to zero. That means these are the intervals, right? Now, x cannot be equal to zero, right? So we know x is not equal to zero. So you cannot include zero in your solution, right? So this point is not included. However, you could always include minus 1. And so our answer is from minus infinity to minus 1 where minus 1 will be included union. Then we have from the second 0 which is at uh, I mean undefined at 0 to 9 right. So it is from 0 to 9, where 9 is included. It does make sense. So that becomes the solution of this particular inequality. I hope that makes sense, right? Now here is another question, which is a rational function for you. Now the concept is similar. The only thing is, you have to bring them all together. So to solve this, we could write as 5 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x minus 2 less than or equal to 0. Let's take common denominator which is x minus 1 times x minus 2. 5 gets multiplied by x minus 2 minus 2 times x minus 1 less than or equal to 0. Open and simplify the numerators. We get 5x minus 10 minus 2x plus 2 over x minus 1 times x minus 2 less than or equal to 0. So let me use the right side now to simplify this. 5x minus 2x is 3x. Numbers minus 8 over x minus 1 times x minus 2 less than or equal to 0, right? So does it make sense? So that is what we get. Now we need to analyze the, and now from here, it's very clear that x is not equal to 1 or 2. 
that is a restriction on the domain. But what we are going to analyze in this particular case is the points around the zeros and where the function is not defined. So these are at 8 over 3, right? So these are at 8 over 3 and well, all these values are positive. So, so 8 over 3 is 2 point something. So we can write this as, let me write in a different ink, 1, 2 and 8 over 3, which is 2 point something. So we could take test points as uh, 0, 1.5, uh, you could take, uh, well, see, let's divide 8 by 3. So when you do 8 divided by 3, you get 2.66 recurring. So we could take 2. Point, let's say 4 here and let's say 3 here. Okay. So what we're going to analyze are these three. So let's write them in order. X minus 1, X minus 2, 3X minus 8. The order helps since substituting the values, we get a pattern. So we get this negative, these two positive, right? For 1.5, both will be negative and this will be positive and for this all three negatives and one positive so when you combine these you will get negative here positive here negative here positive here we're looking for less than that means that is the solution set and remember when you write down the answer do not include the restrictions which are these one and two right these are the restrictions so the solution for us is what? What is the answer? So the answer is from minus infinity to this point at 1, where 1 is not included, union. The next interval is from 2, where 2 is not included, to 8 over 3. So we write 8 over 3, but 8 over 3 is a 0. Include that. Does it make sense to you? So that is how we could solve all these inequalities, right? So we have solved all these questions. Now, let's get back to our test question. That is, we need to write an inequality using absolute functions whose solution is given on this number line. That is, the x value is between minus 5 and 3. So here is this question for you. Let us see how to do it. Now, the... This question is not very simple. We need to use absolute values to write our inequality. As a double inequality, I could always say x is greater than minus 5 and is less than 3. How do we get absolute function? Well, the steps involved are like this. In absolute function, we are always interested in finding the center value, the midpoint. So that is the first step and the second step is how far. Answering these two questions gives us the solution. Now the true limits are minus 5 and 3. To find the midpoint we can add and divide by 2. So we get minus 5 plus 3 divided by 2, which is minus 2 divided by 2, which gives us the point as minus 1. So the center of this is at minus 1. The second question is, how far from the midpoint? So you could do 3 minus minus 1 or minus 5 minus 1. So if I do 3 minus minus 1, I get what? I get 3 plus 1, which is 4. So that is to say that the distance from here to there or from these two points is 4 units, right? So these are 4 units from the center. Now I think you can get your solution. In absolute function terms, we're trying to say that absolute value of x now this has moved to the center which is at minus 1 so plus 1 
and the distance from the center is less than 4 is less than 4 since these points are not included right it is less than 4 so absolute value of x plus 1 less than 4 is the solution does it make sense to you right so so that is how you are going to solve it so I hope it is absolutely clear correct now here is another question for you which you can take as a test so let me write another question for test and this time I'm not giving you two points but I'm saying that the solution is this except for this point everything else is the solution and let's say this point is 3 now write absolute function inequality so let this be the test question for you final so feel free to write your comments providing the solution of this question I hope in this video you learned all the steps required to solve inequalities if you like and subscribe to my videos that would be great thanks for watching and all the best